Dr. Rahul Jandial, he's a brain surgeon at City of Hope, Los Angeles, also a health and wellness correspondent. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us My uh, pleasure. here, Dr. Jandial. Uh, first off, beginner slope, we're told there was no speed, uh, she was, there was no sign of blood. How can it be that somebody can take a, what seems to be from the outside eye a simple fall and short time later end up dead. How does this happen? Well, that's exactly why the story is so devastating. It seems harmless and then later on she's brain dead and four days later she's no longer alive. So that's exactly the tragedy we want to avoid by making recommendations that if you wear a helmet, you're going to be better off. Even on a beginner slope? Absolutely. Mm. Snowing, snowboarding, skiing, bicycling, skiing on water, wear a helmet. It helps. If you don't and you take a fall, you should still be evaluated because the mechanisms, by the way, we fall on the ski slopes are different. She probably didn't know how to brace herself. Maybe she fell backwards. It happens in snowboarding. If your edge gets caught, you can take a real hard fall. So if you need to be evaluated, that should be done by somebody professional and not just by somebody in the family. Mm. Now, doctor, is, is there a difference also in age at all? Because, I mean, uh, kids bang, bump their, bump heads, their heads, all the heads all the time. We all have, And, right? you know, yet, uh, and 45, she was very young. But is there any difference at all there? There is. You know, we don't want to have people be alarmed that if you bump your head cutting out of the car, or you bump your head in the cabinet, or you get a little knot on your head, rush to the ER. That's not what we're suggesting. But if there's a mechanism where your head strikes the ground and you get knocked out, you need to get evaluated. They do that in the boxing ring. Boxers have medical people on the ringside mm -hmm. because when you get knocked out, that means you had a significant mechanism and you should go get evaluated. 99 times out of 100, you'll still go home. But that few percentage of people who develop a blood clot don't know about it and we detect it early and we can take it out with brain surgery, you can really save their life. And I don't know if that's applicable for her, but it sounds like she had something called an epidural hematoma where you have a lucid interval, meaning there's a period of clarity. You yeah. get knocked out, you wake up, I'm fine, fine, I'm fine, right? I'm fine. I'm feeling said, fine, yeah. uh, we don't need an EMT. And the blood clot is expanding within your brain and smashing your healthy brain and causing brain damage. And the next thing you know, you have a bad headache and you're falling apart very quickly. Is there any point within that window that you've just talked about that an intervention by medical professionals can help. Absolutely. You know, when you work in a trauma center where you have here in any major city, when you bring people in who've had a mechanism of potential brain injury, you do a scan. Okay. You find that hemorrhage, you run them to the OR and you take that clot out and many times you can save their life without any brain damage. But when you're out in the periphery, you're in the mountains, you're in a smaller town, those sources and those resources are less available. There. Here you can get helicoptered in and yeah. it is very effective. Did it just take too long to get her to a medical facility? Is that if, if maybe she would have gotten there sooner, things could have been completely different. Now those are all hypotheticals. I yeah. don't know the case, but I know there is a medical condition in which that sounds very much what happened to her. Now could, could the air travel cause any further, you know, because I mean, I'm from Montreal and right. they have wonderful medical facilities there, but then she, they flew her to, my, uh, to New York. Uh, could that also, you know, the difference in air pressure or anything? You know, what we're talking about, a clot expanding and her getting brain damage is really within the first few, you know, minutes to hours. Oh. After the brain damage has happened, I think she went down a different course. Then it became, is she in deep coma mm -hmm. or is she brain dead? Mm. Now, people can come out of deep coma. That's what you hear about. That's how miracles happen. But when you're brain dead and all the tissue in your brain is not receiving any blood flow, and you check a scan and all the brain is dead, there's no coming back from that. And, so, and, and that's the distinction between this phrase brain dead and a coma. Absolutely. When you're brain dead, the reasonable thing to do, and everybody does, is to withdraw the support because your heart and lungs are artificially being kept alive. When you're comatose, you still have a little signal. The light is still on deep inside your brain, just not enough for you to be awake and communicating right. with your world. You, you've so brought, there's always a chance. You've brought a, a, a skull here. And, and I, I don't know, I think people think this, and we talk about this with infants and little kids, that there's a quote-unquote soft spot. Are there parts on the head that are more vulnerable than other parts? Well, that's a good point. The kids have a soft spot, but when you get a clot, the actual bone shells can expand and accommodate the clot. The real problem is, is for adults, when the blood clot forms and the skull is rigid and it can expand, so that's actually more deadly. And what happens if you think about baseball players, the side that they're swinging the bat from, they have an ear protector, mm -hmm. if you notice. Mm -hmm. It's meant to protect the ear as well as the soft temporal region, which is really up here. And this is the thinnest spot in the brain. Yeah. And this is the classical area where you get that epidural hematoma, meaning that blood clot that has a lucid interval, you feel fine, and next thing you know, you have significant brain damage. My goodness, I think we, you've answered a lot of questions, but bottom line, beginning snowboarding, not even just beginners, skiing, snowboarding, cycling, skateboarding, put a helmet on, even if you're an adult, if you're, if you're going out there. Absolutely, and people argue the statistics, but when they made bicycle helmets a law and motorcycle helmets a law, everything became much better in the ER and the ICU. Wow. We, we got to say a big thank you to Dr. John Dial. We appreciate it so thank much you, you lending your expertise. Uh, thanks for being here today. My pleasure.